Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Ivan from Barcelona who will be discussing the Catalonian referendum and what led up to the current impasse and what is the way forward. Ivan, we've been seeing pictures and descriptions of what's been happening in Barcelona, in the, in the Catalonian region. It seems that the Spanish government has come down with a very heavy hand to stop the referendum. Can you tell us a little bit about the background of the Catalonian independence movement for the Indian readers, what has been its history and why suddenly it has acquired this dimension, leading to what seems to be a crisis of the Spanish state? I could, I could respond this question in many different ways, but I think a, a very good thread is the last thing you mentioned. I think we are dealing with a crisis of the system with a crisis of the regime that was established in Spain after the death of, uh, of the fascist dictator uh, Franco in year 75. From there, what came was this constitution that uh, tried to accommodate different realities in one single text. One very worrying uh, component to, the, to this new system that was being built is how to deal with long-standing territorial tensions, especially from two territories in Spain, maybe three, Galicia to a lesser extent, the Basque Country and Catalonia. So the recip, in the end, the solution was creating this state of the autonomies in which the design of the Spanish state was one in which 17 regions had a variable degree of autonomy and of course you know the two more specific ones were the Basque Country and Catalonia. For many years the design of the system relied upon the existence of two big parties the Popular Party Conservatives, the Socialist Party, Social Democrats, Liberal Social Democrats that shared or you know took turns to govern and made bigger majorities with regional parties both in the Basque Country and Catalonia in the Spanish Parliament. Why could that happen? Because the electoral system was one in which regional parties had a disproportionately high representation in the Spanish Parliament. And not casually, the two main parties from the Basque Country and Catalonia that always made alliances with the two big state parties were bourgeois, right-wing, conservative, Basque and Catalan parties. So that worked pretty well for 30, 35 years. But then the economic social crisis in 2008, 2009 hit Spain, like you know, it hit many other countries in the world. The system started to crack. The two big parties, central state parties in Spain, started to lose representation. The Socialist Party lose almost half of the votes it had like 15 years ago. And the Popular Party, still the big majority, but very much weakened in the last five, six years. What happened in Catalonia is that corruption is rampant all, all over in Spain, right? So the ruling party in Catalonia, which was this bourgeois right-wing party, was very much hit by corruption cases. Some analysts say that the only way forward was to press for an independence agenda. And that started like five, six years ago. So you could say that the origin of the agenda for independence was initiated by the right-wing, conservative, Catholic, you know, bourgeois uh, party in Catalonia. But it has two allies. One of them is one party called Esquerra Republicana, which are left-wing Republicans, and one party which was not invited in the beginning, which is the CUP. The CUP is the Candidaturas de Unidad Popular. These are revolutionary, anti-capitalist, Marxist, with some sort of, you know, you know, feeding on the anarcho-syndicalist tradition, in, in, especially present in Barcelona, but everywhere in Catalonia, strongly municipalist and uncompromising. So far, we have seen that 
the radicalization of the agenda has had a very strong component of, you know, trying to build this, you know, alliance between different forces in Catalonia and trying to go for one uh, agenda that took the referendum as one departing point. Because we are discussing about the consequences of the crackdown and the, and the brutality of the police and the, the Spanish state, but for the people in the coup, which in my opinion, they are the main driving force in terms of radicalization of the agenda, it's just the first step. So we had the vote on, on, uh, on Sunday. It was a, an overwhelmingly affirmative vote. People voted, almost 2.2 million Catalans voted yes for independence. Today we're in the middle of a, of a general strike called by all uh, trade unions in Catalonia. There is no state or Spanish trade union that has called for, for the general strike. And if everything goes according to the, to the script, tomorrow we will have a declaration of independence of Catalonia. Well, that will be really the, what shall we say, the cr crisis point because the Spanish government is certainly then going to come down very heavily and probably dismiss the Catalonian government. I think we should consider several scenarios. And one, one of them is, of course, that tomorrow, indeed, we have a, a of course, unilateral. You cannot declare a, a agreed upon declaration of independence. So it's going to be unilateral in any case. You know, in the Spanish constitution, there is this article, the one, the famous 155, that says that the central government can take or suspend the autonomy of one region, of the government of one region, under certain uh, assumptions or, or certain certain happenings. Well, the Spanish government has declared that it's willing to apply 155 if a declaration of independence happens. Yesterday, the Premier, Mariano Rajoy, uh, after seeing how the, 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 the day of the voting uh, unfolded, uh, held meetings with the, the General Secretary of the Socialist Party and the General Secretary of a, of a party called Ciudadanos, which is the fourth political force in Spain, because basically he wanted to have the political cover to be able to apply 155, take over the institutions in Catalonia, call for elections, and eventually bring the army into Catalonia. On the other hand, some analysts say that this declaration of independence is just the attempt of the Catalan government to build a negotiation, uh, you know, a bargaining power when confronting the Spanish government at the other side of the table and try to settle for an agreed upon referendum. The most important political actor uh, in trying to bring together these two opposing and, and, and really antagonized sides right now is the Spanish Socialist Party. They don't know if they should support uh, Premier Rajoy in cracking down completely and bringing law and order back into Catalonia. Or alternatively, they should support an agenda in which Mariano Rajoy doesn't have all the, let's say, all the platform or all the legitimacy to precisely crack down. And my personal view, my opinion is that, I mean, of course, the Spanish state, the Spanish government could bring the tanks here and could, you know, could uh, initiate a, a, a nationwide repression if they want to, but they can't. They are a really unstable government right now. They are precisely depending on one specific uh, action in the parliament, the Spanish parliament, which is they need the budget for next year passed. And following the scheme that I described before, they are their main ally right now is the Basque Nationalist Party, conservative, right-wing representative of the bourgeoisie. That, of course, wants to pass the budget, but they cannot afford politically to support a party, a right-wing nationalist, Spanish nationalist party that cracks down on Catalonia. This is going to be disgraceful for them. The Basques, obviously, are the second uh, most important region wanting also autonomy, if not self-determination. It's an old secessionist movement which has been there in the Basque country, which has been right now much more on the you know, lower ebb, but could any time come back. Coming back to this, uh, for our audience, also that uh, Prime Minister Rojas party, the popular party, 
is also continuation in some sense of the Franquist uh, right in uh, Spain? Of course, the Popular Party is the conservative Catholic party that uh, is the big umbrella for the conservative, sociologically conservative part of the Spanish society. It is usually mentioned, you know, how, how is it possible that everywhere in Europe you see the rise of fascism in, in the form of, you know, electoral success of new neo-Nazi, neo-fascist, ultra-right-wing parties, but you don't see it in Spain. And the explanation is that, you know, the popular party encompasses all realms of society, even the most conservative, the most ultra-right wing, they all fit. But to me, the most relevant factor is that there were a lot of changes in the Spanish political system and Spanish society. And eventually everything was uh, modified or reformed, except for one place, which is the judicial system. There is not a substantial change in what was the legal structure and the structure of the of the judiciary as it was with Franco, as it is now. So if you have the judiciary on your side, you can apply the conservative political agenda unchallenged. That's that's where Frankism and Franco is still present in the Spanish society mostly. Last question. What is the role of the Barcelona mayor who's been saying that uh, the referendum is a right of the people? but at the same time has not supported uh, Catalonian independence or forces like Podemos who seem to be taking a position saying the crackdown was really wrong, shouldn't have been done and so on, but haven't taken a position regarding the issue of the, you know, the referendum. Well, that's a very good question and I do think that she is in a very complicated situation. I don't really think she favors independence of Catalonia. But also because she is someone that, she is a very good politician. She is someone that is trying to bring in this new politics or a political style from the municipalism, not, not thinking in big, big uh, terms or big national projects, but, you know, organizing in a more decent way the everyday life for citizens, trying to make life of citizens better. So she is not someone that really thinks that the solution to the problems of the people in Catalonia is independence. And there is one, one basic principle for everyone that does politics in Spain. If you want to win an election, if you want to rule Spain, you cannot favor the Catalans or the Basques. That is where the stability of the system has been based in the last 30, 35 years, I would say. The crackdown and what happened on Sunday during the vote has helped a lot her position and the position of Podemos for, for, for what it's worth, because that introduces a new dimension to the conflict. They are not, they don't need to defend the independence. They just need to defend the rights of, of the Catalan people to decide and the protection and upholding civil rights and democracy. And that's basically what the fight right now is about. Thank you, Ivan. We'll be coming back to you because I think the Catalonian issue is not going to go into die down so easily. Neither are the troubles in Spain going to be over with this. So we will be back with you to discuss this and other issues in the region, particularly in Spain. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Keep watching News Click.